Welcome back, Nana here. So we have already seen the back-to-back -back operations of the GOB right, by make and transfer. So we are now going to see the final one that is called dropship. So this is the fourth and final activity on the GOP. So by make, transfer, and dropship are the four activities on a GOP. So we'll now see what exactly is a dropship. So we are going to have a look at what exactly is a dropship. So let me go and share my screen, and then we'll now see what is dropship first of all. <clears throat> I'll go there. So uh, in my this thing, what are the first called? Okay, go there. Go to the main now. Open it up. So on the fifth one, we have a document, right? I have already uploaded this now. Second is a dropship process which I have uploaded. So let me open it up and then have a look at it. <clears throat> so here, this is a dropship process. Let us say I am a dealer of a Maruti car. The supplier is a Maruti Udyog who is manufacturing the car. Okay, fine. So we sell the Maruti car to the customers. So now the customer wants, let us say, a mirror. <clears throat> So he will now place a sales order on us. So once with the sales order is placed, let us say we are not having any stock. Now we will now make a drop ship order on the Maruti with you. Okay, fine. So let us say the mirror is going to cost you 200 rupees. So we are now uh, placing a sales order for 200 rupees. And then the supplier, the Maruti with you is now supplying us at 100 rupees. So the margin for us is 100. So we will now make a purchase order for 100 rupees. And then once he receives the order, what he will do is he will not drop ship to the customer straight away. He will not drop ship to the customer straight away. And then uh, uh, he will now inform us that he has done it. <clears throat> so through ASM, through advanced shipment notice, he will now inform, Maruti Udyog will now inform us, we are the dealer, that he has shipped it to the customer. So we will now make a logical result of the ASM. We are not going to make any physical results because the material has already been supplied by Maruti Udyog to the customer. So once when the logical result is made, then we will be, the sales order gets fulfilled actually. Once when the sales order is fulfilled, now we will now go on then what? We will now raise the invoice to the customer actually. And then we will now collect the vendor. <clears throat> so in this business, uh, if the customer goes and then ask Maruti Udyog for a mirror, he will now redirect him to only the dealers basically. Because the original equipment manufacturers will always honor the dealers, the distributors, retailers, etc. Because only when we survive, they can survive in the field. So they will never entertain the customer's street. <clears throat> so they will always ask them to go and then meet the nearest dealer or distributor or retailer to get the things done actually. Even for the car man, car they want or mirror or seat belt or whatever it is, any accessory they want. So this is how the business process works upon. <clears throat> so we'll now go there and then have a look at it. Now we are going to set it up. So if you have any doubt on the dropship process, I will again repeat, the customer is placing, we are now uh, making a sales order for the customer for a mirror. And then uh, once when the customer is now, when you are submitting the sales order, the sales order will be redirected to the supplier actually. <clears throat> so your purchase order will be made to him. And then he will now supply the goods to customer directly. And then he will now send the ASN to us that he has shipped it. So we will now make a logical result of the ASN and afterwards we will now bill the customer and then collect the payment actually. So there will not be any contact between the supplier and customer apart from shipping it now. Fine. So they may even use a third party network like a blue dot or whatever it is or otherwise they themselves will be having their own vehicle to transport it, but in no way they will entertain the customers directly for any straight orders actually. So that way the business works upon. So uh, there are so many ways of dropship. This is one such example. I hope that you understood it. So let's go there and then configure this. So go there, click on sign in now. I'm now first of all going to get an item. Fine. The first activity is what item creation. Go there and then I'm creating. I'm now working on 21 EMP1. So let me go and then create an item. Okay. So we'll now go there and then we'll now go and then create an item. We'll now go to the product management. We'll now go to the product management, product information management. The first activity is to create an item. You're going to create a dropship item. Go there, click on create item. So let me put my mass star over here now. So it's a 1T1 and then automatically the zeroth organization will be coming. And then click on OK. We're accepting it. Accept this warning message. Just no point. Go ahead and then create the item. So go there. It's a 1T1 underscore. I don't see it. Top ship. Item. So it's a drop ship item. It may be a small component or it may be a bigger one. So go to the specifications and then have a look at it. So once we go it, 
the manufacturing ensure that the costing enabled and the inventory asset package is on you go to the inventory <coughs> and then ensure that all the four are on fine inventory items stock for the transactable reserve level thing is on and then afterwards you go to the sales and order management so here make it as a back to back as this fine now you are going to see a what's called through gop route we are going to see a drop ship and then later on we will now see without gop also we can make a performance a drop ship also so this is through gop so whenever you want to have a gop there are four activities on gop one is what make buy transfer and then drop ship so make it and then here in this case what happens is we are not going to ship it to the customers so an external supplier is going to ship it to the customer so make what the default sales order source type is what external make it as external so there are only two things which are required now fine and then normally uh, what happens uh, is a internally transferable flag you can even uh, make it more as it doesn't matter because it is not going to come into picture at all otherwise uh, for a transfer order it is a must actually <clears throat> Order management transaction must be enabled. The shippable must be enabled, and, other, and then the invoice must be enabled. So these are the, some of the basic things which has to be there. And then afterwards, you go to the planning now. So in the planning area, <clears throat> go there. So here, uh, you ensure that it is now MRP planning. Apart from that, nothing else is required on this moment. So there is no need to change it from buy to make at all because we are not making it actually. And go to the purchasing, and then the list price is a mandatory one. So give a list price, my invoice, because what happens? It will not be creating a purchase order on this at all. So this price is a mandatory. So you give the appropriate price on the item, and then later on you can modify also in the purchasing area. And that's it. And go there. Go to the associations. Then let me associate the child or go to the actions and go to select that. So let me associate my child. One T one and then now find the first child I'm going to associate. So child I'm going to associate. Click on apply and click on the button. So the item is now created with the back to back access, and then the source as external. And go there. Click on it. You will save and close. Item is now fully created. And then let us now keep what uh, a stock of around ten now. So keep on it. Now go there. We we'll now go to this place. Let us now keep a stock of ten. So go to this place. I will now go to this place. I will now make a stock of ten. Now go to the supply chain execution and go to the inventory management. <clears throat> and then we will now raise a sales order for fifteen quantities. So ten can be supplied by us, and then five will be drop shipped by the by the supplier. Now, and Marathi Udyog will be going to drop ship the five. <clears throat> So click on it. Go there. Click on it. We now go to what? Create business transaction on one T one one organization. Man, click on change the organization. I will now put what one T one one. Yes. Click on okay now. We now keep ten quantities of this item. Click on it. So click on create business transaction. And then drop it down. And then make it as what business receipt. Go there. So go and then yeah. You click on search. And then choose one of the accounts. Okay there. Click on okay now. Fine. Now that. Go there. Make it as what? Yes, now. <coughs> and then click on it. <coughs> the one T one organization by one T one underscore dr. And then give it up. The drop ship. We have only one item. No, 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 no. It does not keep a stock of enough. So click on it. One T one. So it's a drop ship item. <coughs> so sub inventory. Drop it down. And then I will not keep it in the FGS. Now I go there. Now keep a quantity of ten. For that. Click on it. So click on submit by which what happens? We are now simulated the item as well as on end. Let us now perform what? Yeah, collection. So go to the place and then go to the supply chain planning. Supply chain planning and then go to the plan inputs. And then let us now perform a collection for item on on end. Click on it. Don't go there. So click on the collect planning data. <clears throat> and then go there. Make it as OPS. And then make it as the targeted. <clears throat> and then I'm going to collect item on on end. Item. I'm collecting it from the reference data, and then in the supply planning data, I will go and then collect the online. And that's it. So these two only I'm collecting it on a targeted fashion. So it's always preferable to have it out. So go down. It will not take some five minutes. Some five, five ten minutes approximately. So I'm going to pass the record now. So once when it is completed, we'll again start. I pass. I will now pass it for five ten minutes until it gets completed. So we made a partial collection here now. Fine. Work out the delete stage data is the last one on this. Now. We'll go there. We'll again go there with the plan inputs and then see whether the item is collected or not. <clears throat> go there. We we'll go to the plan inputs. Now. So supply chain planning and then plan inputs. Supply chain planning and then go to the plan inputs and then query for the item. So item starts with what? It's a one T one underscore D R O <clears throat> and then make a search. <clears throat> If the item is selected, it is coming up over here. So it's coming up. So that my item is collected. So now we will now go on and perform the GOP setups. So there are three activities on the GOP. Now go to the order management. Go there. 
So go and order management. And then go to the global order promising. The first one is the ATP. So click on it. We already have an ATP and then we'll insert in the same ATP. So go to the manage ATP rules, the top, and then go there. We'll not query our ATP rules. Manage ADP rules are one. You have to well, now open it up and then click on ADP. Right? You have got all these things available over here. So on this one, I'm going to make an insert notch. Right? So this time, what happens? I will not insert only an item organization because what happens for the manufacturing, it was a told in one of the uh, what's called documentation, you make an item level insertion actually. So I was an item. And then uh, I think item organization is okay, I think, probably. Right? Okay, no plus one, I'm not doing it. Now make an item organization. So I don't know, give a can, right? can you know, give a cancel right? We had to edit it actually. And so we can click on it, not a plus number. And remember, uh, you put the tick mark because uh, the document is saying that you put a tick mark on all three also, apart from these things. So this uh, area will be what I was uh, discussed in the in a planning center, actually. In the planning center, I mean, they will not give you a lot of information. So these figures are 50, 50, 50, 50 is okay, right? With the user defined and user defined is okay. Fine, right? Put a tick mark on these three also. We are doing it fine. Well, go to the ADP to the same months. And then here, what happens? You go there. I will not insert it. Fine. Okay, plus two. Let me make an item organization. So, so they say sometimes item is okay. Fine. That point. It doesn't matter. I will not drop down and then query for the item. Because such, you know, see that drop ship is already there. And that's it. And go and save and close. So our supply chain ATP balancing your demand and supply with the, these three tick marks also is ready. So click on save and close. Now we had to create only one sourcing rule over here. Right? That is the only thing which is going to do it now. Right? So once when you make a sourcing rule, so we are going to place a purchase order on the supplier. The supplier is going to ship directly to the customer. Right? So that is what it is going to happen. Now, right? So we will not go there. We will not create only one sourcing rule for this. Right? So you go to the what's called uh, manage sourcing rules. And then we have already created for a back-to-back -back buy on this one. We already created. Right? Once you want to make a search, you'll find that, that itself we can very well use. So back-to-back -back buy. We are now then what a global buy we have made it. And this itself is okay. So, we have some query for it. Because the same supplier, I'm going to use it. So, the global buy. So, this itself is sufficient, actually. So, in a back to back buy, the supplier will be supplying to us, and then we will be shipping to the customers. In a drop ship, the supplier himself is going to supply to the customers. So, that will be made in the assignment set, actually. So, this sourcing rule itself is sufficient. Right? So, we are now using the 1T1 sub one, the supplier. I'm going to use it. Right? I'm not going to create any new uh, sourcing rule at all. And this is the only sourcing rule which will be there in the assignment set. Right? So, I'm not creating any sourcing rule. I'm not using the back to back, the global by itself. I'm using it now. Right? We'll now we'll go to the final setup of what the assignment set. Right? What is that? What's called assignment set? So, manage what's called manage assignment set is the one. I'm going to query it. I'm querying it now. So we are going to insert only one sourcing rule for this one. That itself is going to do everything. So uh, if we go on that, do an item organization, the supplier will be supplying to our org. So whenever an org is involved, what happens? He will be supplying to us. So we have to identify a thing where the org is not involved. But item must be there. But org should not be there. So if you go on them, see everything everywhere. So uh, uh, item without an org is not there at all. There is only one thing called item. So if you choose item as a, as a level of sourcing, then what happens? The supplier is now going to, what happens, arrange the material, and then he himself will not ship it to the customer because there is no other group. There is the only sourcing rule which is going to be there. Right? Item and then go there. No popular the item. If you make an item or it becomes a normal back-to-back -back buy. If you put an item, it is a drop ship. This is the one which is now making the difference actually. Drop ship. So I'll now make the drop ship for you. Sourcing rule. But the same one t one global buy. I'm going to use it. I will not use the global buy. So sourcing rule is same. But since because the assignment level is item, it is a drop ship. Right? If the assignment level is going to be item off, it is a normal back to back buy. Right? So he himself will be doing it. And then even though we have a global ship from this or, it doesn't work at all because it gets fulfilled at this level itself. It gets fulfilled at this level. Itself. So go that it might save and close. The global ship will not work at all. Before which itself it gets fulfilled, and that's it. Now, having done this, what happens? We have to go and then perform a full collection and then full refresh now. So, otherwise, you do it, it will not, it's not working properly. So, what happens? The next video, after doing a full collection and full refresh, I will again come back and then I will now demonstrate this dropship. Bye for now. And then, always write to me for any clarifications to uh, nana.app60 at gmail.com.
or otherwise you contact me directly 9841867924 or otherwise what you do is you go on the put your problems on the telegram group no fine somebody or other either me or somebody will be answering you fine best wishes for a prosperous career in tuition apps bye for now hi nana here uh you are welcome to the second part of this uh, drop ship actually so we have completed uh, the setups and then we have done the collections as well as the refresh now before we place the sales order for the drop ship item we have got four more activities to be completed so let us now complete those four activities and work on so let me go on and share the screen Go there. So, uh, let me go on and sign in. <clears throat> so, I got four more activities to be completed. So, here you click on it. The first activity. So, here you go to the setup and maintenance. And then you go to the actions and then go to the offerings. So, I am in the FSM area. It is called the functional setup manager area. So, from here you click on the actions and then go to the offerings. Now. Let me go to the procurement offering. You go to the procurement offering. You click on the procurement offering, and then click click on the opt-in features on the right hand side. So click on the opt-in features on the right hand side. <clears throat> we go to the next step now. So for a drop ship process, this is the must actually. This is the activity number one. They need not be collected actually, and so I'm not included in the collection actually. So again, the top procurement. Click on the futures. Top procurement there. Click on the futures. So if you go down and then have a look at it on the features, <clears throat> you go down. You can now see one customer sales order fulfillment must be on. So this is activity number one. So on the procurement side, when you perform a drop ship now, when you perform a yeah, drop ship like this now, fine. So the customer sales order fulfillment must be enabled. Then only what happens? You'll be able to drop ship to the customer actually. So now I click on it. This is activity number one. In the in the next activity number two. The drop ship must be enabled on order management. Actually, we have to enable the drop ship on order management. On the procurement, we are now enable the customer order fulfillment, customer sales order fulfillment, and similarly on the order management, we have to enable drop ship. So these are the two activities that we want. Click on done and then come out of it. So go to the order management and then go to the <coughs> choose the order management. Oh, you know, choose the order management and then click on the opt-in features of order management. So click on the opt-in features of the order management. So here you do not have to go inside any further. So in the main itself, what happens? Uh, no, now to the main. You have to go there. You go to the order management and then click again on the features. You go to the order management and then click on the features. We have to enable dropship. Fine. Dropship must be enabled. Fine. Activity number two is complete. We will not go for the activity number three. <clears throat> so click on the now. Done. Come on. Now. So two activities are completed. The third activity, which you have to do, fine. Click on the now and come out of it. Uh, especially when you are going to move material between two inventory orgs, fine. Right? The financial orchestration comes into picture. The financial orchestration comes into picture. I am not aware of it now. So manage right? the supply chain. Hmm. It is basically options. The task name actually. Uh, the task name is not known to me. Now. So it's called manage supply chain financial orchestration system options. So manage supply chain financial orchestration system options. The task name and and then here you have to set down because here the intercompany payables and receivables are going to come up. So I am in my structure actually. So the system automatically puts the the divisions or over here now as a master. So when you are doing it, we have to change it now. And then the service items also I am not exactly aware of. It. There are so many other setups that I am not touching it because we are not going to push anything to the financials. So this is the one which you have to do before you move it. Say for example, my BU is in Madras, and then I have uh, what uh, I have my customer near Bombay. That is a uh, Bombay is another BU. So once when I am going to drop ship to a customer which is very near to the BU, so uh, the supplier who is there in uh, Bombay will be shipping it actually. So in which cases, what I mean, there are so many such cases are there in which we will be having what across BU activity as such. So here that year do it. So uh, uh, whenever such a thing comes, you have to set it up. Fine, I'm now setting it up. So this is you have to learn, or otherwise the financial team will be setting it up. This is the activity number three. Activity number four. Now, fine. So manage fine. drop flow. This you have to do. You only have to. So drop ship flow. It's called the manage drop ship flows. So this you have to do. manage drop ship financial flows. Even though it's called as a financial, you only have to do it. So click on plus now. Fine. I'm going to begin. 
So click on plus and then go there. I will now say 1p1 underscore ds find fin flow. DS fin flow by that you want. So click on description. Now, upon fulfillment, supplier ownership changes the event. Right? So once when the supplier supplies it, when it is going to change, the customer becomes the owner of the material and not no more V or supplier actually. So there are two options that are available here. One is the ASM. So once when you receive the ASM from supplier, that becomes the customer becomes the owner. Or otherwise, there is one more option is available in that part. AP invoice match. So whenever you do one of them, what happens? He becomes the owner. Now. In this portion, you learn it from financial sector. Right? So I'm going to demo a ASM from supplier actually. So that at the time, what happens? Uh, the ownership changes from uh, us to customer or from supplier to customer actually. Customer becomes the owner of the material. That is the change point of this. And then priority, if you have multiple things, what happens? The least priority will work actually. If I'm, I'm not, having, not having much of a lot, right? so then I and when you have multiple logs, you have to think, think, and then do it. Now, it's a very, very sensitive one, and then do it. To come plus. So give a priority. And then when you have multiple logs, whichever is a lower one will fire actually. So that you have to think and then do find how it's firing in the field. You have to do it. Now, when you have multiple entries over there, click on plus. Now, I'm going to do it. <clears throat> okay. So selling BU is not all BU. I will now put my BU over there. Go on. I will now search for it. And then let me put my BU. 1T1 is the one. I click on search. So the one if I click on okay number. No, no, no. Selling views is not. So it's legal and it is also coming. And then the receiving trade organization is what? 1T1. Okay, and drop it down. <clears throat> it's one. No, no, no. 1T1 child or no, no. 1T1 child or no. and that belongs to this view. Sometimes what happens is the selling and receiving view will be different, in which case the, the previous one, I told you the system options has to be set, as well as one more document is there on the financial orchestration actually. If you go there, if you go to the order management. Fine. You'll have one supply chain financial orchestration. This one. This document explains you about how to set up the supply chain uh, financial orchestration. If the selling and receiving view are different, actually. So it has got lots of things on this now. Right? So you may have to sit up along with the financial team and then you have to understand it about how to set it up actually. Right? The big one. And then uh, this will be taught in the financial training actually, because it's basically for intercompany payables and receivables actually. So you do this also. And sometimes what happens is they will ask you to set up. So you must be in a position to set it up also. So I'm not leaving it as a in the status is that I will not make it as active. And remember, when you have multiple logs, fine. And then when you're having multiple entries, uh, uh, and then if you have multiple rules itself, then the priority comes into picture. The lower the priority will fire actually. So at the time of dropship, you may have to what happens is change the priority. It will now go to the draft stage and then make it as active. My students were saying something like that. Right? They say that normally they keep only for each and every inventory or they will have only one, one rule now. And then if there are multiple logs in your place, then what happens, they will now make different priorities. And then whichever they want to fire, they, that precedence, they will now make it as a least so that that will fire actually. I couldn't exactly understand this. Topic, but keep in mind that there is something which you have to do for a dropship before you go for it when you have multiple logs or multiple rules over here. Because uh, now experience date time was lost. So effective date is okay, man. Say it is active and the same close. The fourth activity is now complete. So you're not complete all the four activities. Okay, we already have one more rule also. Right? The system has got a default flow. And right? if you go there, click on it. So now go on and edit now. Right? Default flow. So if you make an edit, then it will now become a, or happens a, a what's called draft now. Right? The word is saying the effective date today or the past date. I'm going, do you want to continue or something like that? No, I'm not going to do it. Cancel. So uh, something will not change also. You will not click on that. Instead of deleting it, I will not click on the hyperlink of this and then have a look at it now. Hyperlink of it and then have a look at it. So it shows, you see, they have now made two entries now. One for the Chicago and then one for DC2 actually. And then the priority two. So one rule itself can have multiple entries for different other law. One is the one, US one to US one. Here is a Supreme US to Supreme US. Right? Again, what I was, both of them belongs to the same B1. So likewise, you may have to configure also in your place. Cancel it. This will come by experience only. Thank you. So now, then having done all the things, we'll uh, log out and log in, then we'll look at the same zone. Because the fourth activity is a new one now. Right? So click on these four activities do not need any corrections at all. Fine, corrections are not required for this. Go ahead and do it. Now, we'll now create a sales order for this. <clears throat> it is going to be dropship. So I'll now go there. Click on it. Go for that and then go to the order management. And then for the order management, let us now create a sales order. So click on create order. 
So since it is my own BU, so no need to select the BU because the BU will be coming automatically on the right hand side. It's got in the one BU now. What happened? One T one EMP one. How come I'm in one T one EMP one? How come the BU has come like this now? <laughs> uh, I couldn't understand this one. Right? It was actually one. So now now all the BUs are coming. Oh yeah. So I will now put my customer over here. Now, my one T one customer. <clears throat> Click on it. Click on it. So let me put my item over here now. The dropship item. <clears throat> and remember, the built account has to come properly. If you are doing it, then what happens? That will be set up error section. So one key one underscore dropship in your time. So the dropship item. Will be here. So click on search. <clears throat> so it is a dropship item. Is the one? Thank you, Monty. And we have quantity of ten with us now. So I am not going to go for a stock of what. Uh, I will not go for a stock of, and I should say it's in stock actually. Right? I will not go for a 15 or 16 stock, same quantity. We have what 10 quantities of this item. I go that one. We have a, in the stock 10 quantity. So six only has to be drop shipped actually. Click on it. 16, I'm going for. <clears throat> you know, see, last time the stock didn't sense at all, but this time I made a full collection actually. And so it has to sense this. what I feel now. I'm going to it. System stock has to be sensed actually. So ten is this. Then we we'll open up a notepad now. So the order number is nine seven four two zero. Nine seven charts of these. Come on here. You should not cause any problem. So go there and then go to the actions and then go to the switch to fulfillment view. <clears throat> go to the fulfillment lines. So go for the and then click on the do number now. So orchestration schedule. So now it has changed to procure now. You know what changed to procure now? Click on the option. The orchestration, so it is a generic orchestration only custom do fine. Since the purchasing is involving that on the operation. Now scheduled, the organization has been picked up now. So next one is what? It has to go to procurement. The procure has started now. Now you can see the requisition created has no count. So it has not created the requisition feature. So the requisition feature. So it's basically a dropship process window that was not allowed. So go to the fulfillment lines and then go down and then how the go down. And you can now see, yeah, what's called it. The dropship order has come now. Fine. There is no supply chain orchestration coming into picture at all. Right? There's not a supply chain orchestration. So the score is not triggered actually. And then it is now going and then doing it directly. It's a dropship activity. In a dropship, the score is not, the supply chain orchestration is not triggered actually. So we'll now see what, how much is the quantity for this one. <clears throat> so 16 is the one. I have to have a requisition only for six quantities because we have a 10 quantities available in our, in our area now. So the dropship is there. So requisition is there. The requisition, requested ship do, the schedule ship date, everything is now coming fine for that. And then you can now see the requisition number is also recorded. Requisition number is three, requisition line number is one. So the requisition number is also coming over. Now let us now go there, right click on the duplicate. So the requisition is now created. Let us go there, we will now go to the procurement, go to that, what's called procurement. <coughs> we will now go to the procurement, and then you will now go to the purchase uh, orders now. Click on the purchase orders. So the requisition would have got approved also. Right? Go to the purchase orders, and then here you go there, click on it. We will now go to the process requisition. I know that I hope that you all know pro procurement fully. So with an assumption, I'm not going over there now. Right? So I'll not click on it. Click on the process requisition and query requisition number three. So this I'm going to convert it into a purchase order. Actually. I should ideally get only for six quantities. Now. I will not say three, no, three over there. And then remove the buyer. Buyer will not be there in the purchase requisition. So here in this place, it shows you the requisition number is three. It has got line number one. Now. 
So go to this place over here. I'm going to go there. Click on search. <coughs> Sorry, position number three. I'm going to search you. So you can now see a dropship item has come now. Fine. It is not there for the entire 16 quantities. Come on here. It is not sensing the supply at all. <laughs> I don't know what to do now. <laughs> So on the back-to-back -back buy and then the back-to-back -back transfer, it was sensing the supplies. But for the back-to-back -back make as well as the dropship, it is not sensing the supplies. Right. So somebody, please make an R&D. I may be making some mistake now. I'm not sure about it. Right. We have a supply, but it is not sensing. These two business processes are not sending the our inventory supplies as such. So click on the IE icon. Find if, if you click on the IE icon, it says what? The requested goods are to be shipped to a third party. There is a customer now, not for us. So once when the materials are bought, what happens? It has to be shipped and selected. And then click on add to document builder. You're going to add to the document builder now. So you know, add to the document builder. So that will be getting document builder. We don't have any supplier ready-made available. Yeah, we have a supplier actually. So the supplier is already in our sourcing rule. We have only given the supplier actually. Fine, the supplier is not getting popular. You know, but we don't have any source agreement on it. Fine, click on OK now. Fine. So we don't have any BPA available there. BPA or CPA is not created for this item. So it is now blank actually. But the supplier is now coming from the sourcing rule automatically. Click on create. So we are going to create a purchase order. So the requisition is now getting converted into a purchase order. We are going to get a purchase order. And then before we approve it, we will now see whether the approvals are now proper now. And somebody might have filled around. So let us now set it up to automatic actually. So that we will not have any problem at all in this place. <clears throat> so I will now go there. Click on it. I will not set up the fine right click on that one of the duplicate. And then we will now set up the approvals first. So let's now set it up for and click on it and then go there. Go to the setup and maintenance and then go to the generic task area. So click on it. Go there. So click on what? Go there. Go to the search now. Yeah, what happens? Manage document of course. Percentage. Doc percentage. APP percentage. Okay, no point. So manage document of the one. So go to the manage purchasing document approvals. <clears throat> go there. And then here. Uh, one of them is enabled and go there and now see whether it is a automatic approval or fine click on any tools and then have a look at it. It is automatic one. So no problem at all. Fine, we'll be getting approval automatically. Fine, we have a cancel now. Fine, it's okay. And then we'll now come over here. Fine. Now the document has been created. Fine, click on that. So the document has been created for 16 quantities now. So everything is there. I will now go to the schedules and then see whether uh, how it's going to be there. The schedules. Go that point. And then click on edit now. You can now see again the location is coming now. It is a customer's location. Normally, what happens if you see this? So the built location is now there. So the default ship location is not coming here at all. Fine. We are now going to ship it to the customer's location. Fine. That's one one. So if you go on and see this now, fine. the document. So he is now going to supply not to us, but to the customer now. So the uh, customer's address is available on this place. Now, the customer's address. If you click on the location, what happens? You can now see the customer's address. Now. So this address, whatever we, while we are creating the customers, we are not given the address. So they will be, it will be shipped to this address now and not to us. Actually. So my main one, the Maruti Udyog, who is a OEM manufacturer, is now going to ship it to the customers, and then he will now only send the ASN to us. So this was. So here, if you click on it now, so it will now say on the IE icon, it will now show you. This is a third-party location. That is what it is. Select it, and then I click on Edit now. We are not going to make any goods reserved at all for that point. So there is no need to what happens. The reserve loading is always there in this case because we are not going to make only a result of ASN. And then once when the ASN, rather what happens, we will not even be receiving it actually. The moment the ASN is made, I think uh, the system will now uh, communicate to us that it is fulfilled actually. That is what I am not exactly remembering it. I don't think even the ASN need to be received actually. The ASN also need to be not, not be received. So upon what happens, submitting the ASN from the supplier portal, uh, the sales order will be uh, going to fulfill that actually, right? or otherwise it will not go for the billing activity. That is what I remember. I am not exactly remembering it in most cases. So you cannot fiddle around on the result loading at all. So go down, uh, give a cancel. So the location is the customer's location. That is what I am saying now. That is now submit properly. So the purchase order number is one not. The purchase order number is also three. It is also three. And click on submit. So upon submitting it, the purchase order gets created. And then that will be updated on the sales order also. The purchase order number will be updated on the sales order also. So it is now getting submitted for document number three. So if you go on and have a look at the sales order, 
sales order area. So here, the requisition is now coming. There will be some area where the purchase order number also will be there. Oh, drop ship PO. So in this place, what happens? You can now see the drop ship PO. So go there. So click on this now. And then here, uh, in the process requisition, you can go to the place. And then you can go to the manager orders. And then how it Order number three. You're going to have a look at it. Order number three. So click on search. <clears throat> So once we search for it, now pending approval. So wait for the approvals to take place, even though it is now set up and automatically, it's gonna take some time for the system to update it. In the meantime, we'll now go to the supplier portal and then we have to go and have a look at it. We don't take a copy of it. We will have to go to the supplier portal because supplier has to log in now. So you'll be getting A's and actually take a copy of it. I will now take Opera now. Opera. <clears throat> we have already created a supplier here now. Right? <clears throat> so we'll now paste this one. Let him go on then log in. So we already given a, a username of what a1.n1. I right, remember during a back to back buy. It's a welcome one to three. Welcome on the way. And then click on sign in now. Yes, sign in. So we'll now go to the supply portal. And then in the main area itself, what happens? We'll be getting an intimation that this is now created. The purchase order is created. So once it is approved, it will be communicated over here. This place itself, one more will be visible now. <clears throat> so I think uh, the approval process is still going on. Go to this place. So click on search, and then click on search. It has to be open. Now it's open. So once when it is open, open means what? It is approved now. Fine. You go to the manage sales orders. Let us now refresh it now. Now go and refresh it. So click on refresh. So requisition created. Now it has gone to awaiting shipping. So it is not going to waiting shipping. Your purchase order is not ready now. And purchase order is ready. So from the requisition created state, whatever is not going to this place, and then you can now see the drop ship order is also coming. Line number is also coming. The schedule is also coming. And the buyer is also who is the purchase officer. Everything is now coming in this place. So we have to have this information also over here now. So uh, how to refresh it here? Here I don't know. I don't go to the manage orders and then how to the manage orders. I don't think there will be a message coming here now. So we now wait. order number three. And click on search now find us to communicate to him through supply portal we'll be getting information so he got the order now upon shipping what he is going to do is he has not shipped the item to the customer he'll be getting as and pops and i think upon as and submission itself the sales order will be what happens uh, shipped it will be coming to the shipped status now that's what i feel now i've forgotten that Will not say otherwise, we have to what happens manually make a receipt. Click on the create agent. The shipments are not getting agent. So click on create. You now we have to create the purchase order number and then only for the order number you have to create. And click on search now. Fine. Now supplier is now searching on the order number for which you will not create agent. So click on, click on create agent. <clears throat> he will say uh, nana underscore two not one no. the shipment date, the freight terms, vendor price, freight, whatever it is, the shipping method, one T for nine. So we have is now coming from the number of shipment packages is now three, and then bill of lading number and you want bay bill number this one, and then you know packing slip number this one, and then the packing code this one, and then special handling code this one, and then if you give a tar weight, then we have to have this thing also. Fine, tar weight is now like 12 kg, then the weight is important, fine, with a kilogram. You okay, and then you tar. So you need some measures, and I'm going to put it into search. It is preferable, you can ask the supplier to what happens. Uh, uh, Kilogram, no point. K, you know, make a search. So I don't know, make it what? Kilogram, kg. So ask the supplier <coughs> to give value addition to the AAs and actual. So that you will have a good record of it. I don't know, say 9 kg is the net weight, total one time, the net weight is So when you give it, then what happens again? You have to give it. So commands, give it to the commands, and then you will know, say, uh, the purchase order is about 16 quantities. You will not know, say the entire quantity is not getting drop shipped. Actually, we will not do anything. We will not make a partial one and see what happens. We will not make it as only 14 quantities. We will not see how the sales order line is getting split or not. So, 14 quantities are not going to So, uh, it is not done fine. He is not going to. So, in my opinion, if you submit it, the sales order has to go to fulfill. That is what I feel. So, there is no need to physically receive this ASN. Now, that 201, we will not see what happens. Now, right? concept. Submitting it. So from the supplier portal, the supplier is now supplying the uh, is now creating the ASM is now created. So this indicates that 
what happens the supplier has not shipped to customer and then he has credit against him. And through the system, it has to update our sales order, you know, see whether it updates or not. Otherwise, if it doesn't update, then we have to go on and make a physical receipt. So here, it is now awaiting shipping, you know that. So click on refresh now, fine. It has to go to ship now. Click on refresh. It is not shipped, the chi. He got it. So there is no need for us to physically receive it. So click on refresh. Now we have shipped only 14 quantities. The line has to get split into two, now, fine. 14 is now shipped. Now it has not got changed to this now. Fine. Go then. What happens? I click on done now. See whether the line has got split or not. Yeah, the line has got split. Very good. The line has got split now. Fine. So it is now you know, one is what? One is uh, what happens shipped, one is awaiting shipping actually. Good, good, good. So it has now got shipped now. So in a similar fashion, what happens? We have to make one more uh, AAs in there. There is a lab exercise for it. We do it for two quantities. That will also be getting shipped back. <clears throat> so there is no need to do any physical shipping because supplier has now already shipped it to the place. Now, fine. Supplier has already shipped it, and then he has now made AAs and because I, my memory is good now. Upon AAs and it gets the sales order goes to ship now. And then the main line also gets split into two because any shippable line will be interface to AR actually. In the ship to the line, we interface here. It will be going to awaiting billing also. If everything is okay, then uh, the, it has to go to awaiting billing actually. Then once when you run the auto employees, it will be line will get closed actually. Then I'll see whether it is done or not. So the main line, fine. maybe uh, what happens? It is now waiting for the other line also to be completed. Then only what happens? It will be getting uh, it will be uh, interface to shipping. Maybe uh, we'll not see. Fine. I have a doubt that it is not going to awaiting billing at all. Yeah, it has gone. Yes, it's going to be ready. So this line which has been shipped becomes eligible for billing. So the other one also similarly, you create A's and, and then what happens? They bring it awaiting billing and that's a lab access for it. So this completes the drop ship through the GOP room. If you have any doubts, you can talk to me. Find that more. So this is all done now. That's all. So the whole activity is now complete. So no need to make a A's and reserve fine upon A's and itself. It communicates the sales order that is now shipped actually. Bye for now. Along with some other one.